Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm going to show you how to develop a film. This is a film that was shot on the uh, Minox 35GL. So we have film in a canister. Take it out of the canister for you. You can see it's one of those nice reusable ones. So this is my 12 exposures that I just shot outside in the garden. And what are we going to use to develop it? Well, I'm going to introduce you, actually we're going to talk a bit about um, the lab tank. Um, this is a Kickstarter that's uh, just taken off and they are making a device very similar to what this is. Can you see that? Yeah, yes. This is an Agfa Rondinax 35U. And this is a daylight loading tank. Unlike the normal Patterson tanks, you don't need a dark bag to load your film into it. The other big advantage is it only uses 200 millilitres of chemicals. The downside of it is you have to agitate all the time. So let's show you the parts first of all. Get the top off. So here's our top. And this shows you the inside of this aqua tank. So basically the way that it works is that you put your film spool into here. So here's our film spool. I'll just make sure that I'm in the shot. I've noticed a lot of my videos are seem to be doing stuff outside of the shot. So your film spool goes in there. And there's various fittings for... I think it's the contacts ones. There's this part here, which is like a guide that comes out. You have the spiral that sits on in the upright position rather than the um, in the vertical position rather than the horizontal position. And we have this sort of bit of material with a clip on the end. So if we pull the film out. Snip off our leader like so. And then you've got this clip with some teeth on it, and you attach your film like so. So your film is attached to this thing here. And then you put this guide in. And what this guide will do is it will feed the film onto the spiral. And there's a windy handle at the back. As I turn it, you can see that the material sort of disappears. It's becoming a bit frayed. This is a little bit on the old side, so I'm just going to snip that off. I don't want that dragging all over the film. So we're ready to put the top on now. So the top goes on. Just draw it through there and you can see the idea is it's just going to pull the film down in. So the top goes on. It goes in there like so. So that's now light tight. So what we do is we turn the handle. And what it should be doing is taking the film off of the uh, out of the cassette and loading it onto the spiral. And this is in daylight, so I haven't got to mess around in a dark bag and get all frustrated loading spirals. There's a little indicator on the side, and you can see it's all sort of pointing towards a 12. So I know that we've reached the end because it's got tight, and I can read it off on the scale. Underneath here is a little button. If I push it up. That's just cut the film right at the end there. So if I continue to turn it, that will wind all the film onto the spiral. There should be a thermometer in here. My one doesn't have a thermometer, but if you're buying one, try and get one that's got the thermometer in it. Um, I should also point out there is a six, uh, what's it called? A six EU, which is a version of this for 120 film. It peels off the backing paper which comes out of this end and uh, um, I don't have one of those, they're quite expensive actually, even these are quite expensive 
but you have that benefit of lower chemical usage and being able to process uh, in the daytime. We can't get that cassette or um, film container out until we've actually finished the processing. So that's our film loaded into the tank. I have a timer which is set for seven and a half minutes because we're developing HP5. I have some film clips for hanging it up when we've developed and washed it. And I also have a thermometer, a photographic thermometer, for measuring the temperature of the chemicals. And also have a beverage, and being as this is a kid's show, um, I have coffee. All right, I need some developer. And we need a measuring jug for uh, a measuring beaker. They're more reliable than these. These are these cheap containers. Right, film developer. This is D76. You'll notice it's slightly off colour because unlike the recommendations, I reuse D76. It's £6 a packet. So I'm not going to um, mess about with uh, that's 300 mil, that's a bit too much now. You can carry the weight in comes to using a Patterson tank. Patterson tanks use quite a lot more. For a 120 film, a Patterson tank will use half a litre, so by Kodak's reckoning, you could get two films out of it. That's three pound a film to develop, that's too expensive. Way too expensive. So that's my 200 uh, millilitres of developer. Got my timer set. So all I've got to do, my agitation is I've got to do this continuously for seven and a half minutes. That is the downside. So I'm just going to pour in my developer and start agitating. And I'm going to start the timer. And there we go, just keep turning it. Turning it, turning it, and turning it. It does all come apart before cleaning. You can take this central part here out and take the spiral, and this part comes off for cleaning afterwards. Right, there's, there's my 200 mm developer in. Okay, I'll catch up with you when this is finished because it's really quite boring. Okay, we're down to the last minute of the development part of the cycle. So for those who don't know, we have developer, then we have stop, which stops the development process. And then we have fix, which will fix the image and make it um, light proof so that we can uh, get negatives that we can use in the daytime. And it also preserves the image as well. Um, stop bath. I don't tend to use stop bath. It's purely personal. I just use water. It's probably something that I should add into the mix, but in 40 years of developing films, I've never used a stop glass. But it probably is best practice. So now we start to empty this out. It has a little funnel on it, so you can just empty the developer out. The time is going to beep. the developer out and then my rinsing water goes in again agitating because I want to wash all of the film and this do for about a minute maybe two minutes If you are going to use a stop, use an indicating stop. It changes colour when it's uh, not being effective anymore. Measure right, the fixer.
the fixer I use is uh, Adofix, widely available on the uh, the interweb. Now fixing takes four minutes. I don't really use a timer for this. I just uh, go off the clock. take your film out early and it doesn't look right, it's not completely fixed, you can just put it back into the fixer even in daylight and it will still carry on working. So the, the fixing time isn't quite as critical. Uh, but yeah, again we have to keep agitating it. Put the wrong cap on the wrong bottle. That bottle needs a clean. That was disgusting. Container for fixer when we're finished. I said it was boring, didn't I? So it's why it's a good idea to save film up and do it in bulk because this is a test film and this only takes one. Um, that's the one advantage of the Patterson tanks. I do have an eight spool Patterson tank, it takes eight 35mm films, which is quite useful. I've actually, got three of them. And one of the films I'll show you the dip and dunk method which I do in the bathroom where it's completely dark and you use an open tank and you just um, move the spirals from one tank to the next to the next and that way you can just keep doing films so if you've got sort of 40 or 50 films to develop you can just do them all in the big batch once you've taken your pictures, somebody was asking me about this in the comments um, about the storage of film, but once you've taken your pictures um, and you've exposed the film, um, if you're not planning on developing it straight away, it's a good idea to store that film in the fridge because that will slow down the deterioration of the film. The video that I have to make is about storing film and chemicals and papers and things. I wouldn't store chemicals in the fridge. Not together with food, that's for sure. Even though chemicals nowadays are a lot more environmentally friendly than they used to be years and years ago, um, I still wouldn't put them in a fridge. Especially if you've got children and pets around. So we've had two minutes in the fixer now. Halfway there, give it four minutes. You know, if I'm using concertina bottles, the reason for this is that you can squeeze the air out. Air is the enemy of the uh, of chemicals. You can use the brown sort of storage bottles, the glass ones or brown plastic ones, um, because also light is the enemy as well. You don't really want light um, in clear bottles. Um, I like these ones because they, they are light proof and they're also concertina bottles so you can squeeze all the air out of them. That's the reason why I think I'm managing to reuse this D76. I think this is about the fifth film I've done in the same batch of D76. But it's only a 12 exposure film so it's not really making it work that hard. And we're coming up to the end of our fix time. Again, I'm going to pour out the uh, my fixer and our spout. There we go. Just need to wash this for a couple of minutes under the tap and then we'll be back. And we're back and I'll just put this through the upward wash which is a series of fill and inversions and then uh, discarding and filling again so um, you fill it two five inversions and then tip it out and you do that five times and then you do it ten times and then you do it twenty times it uses less water top comes off Cover our, our spiral, which is a little bit wet, but not too bad. Not one of my concerns with the reusable ones is that they're going to get too wet. And I'll show you how this comes apart now. That's the top. The 
undo the screw in the middle. Comes out, you can see there's a little washer on there. And this handle just comes off. And then the spiral just lifts out like so. So there you can see our film. And uh, there we have some uh, some images. Spacing's good. Exposure. This was using the inbuilt uh, meter. Exposure seems uh, quite reasonable. Spacing's good. The shutter seems to be working okay. And then we're back into the centre of the spiral where we have this connection to this part. So we can just take that off. And uh, we'll put these on the light box later to show you. But there's, uh, there's the negatives. You know, so they're only test shots, so nothing spectacular. But the spacing looks good. Like I say, there's no sort of camera errors, there's no kind of light leaks going on. So, yeah, there we go. And, uh, yeah, that camera's performing quite well. The last one's a little bit weird, but that's uh, understandable. It's only a 12 exposure film. So yeah, in the final wash you should put some photo flow in there, um, I just use a bit of washing up liquid and then you need to run a squeegee over it and I don't have a squeegee to hand. Some people say don't bother with a squeegee, um, I was always taught to use a squeegee. So I'll squeegee this and hang it up to dry in the bathroom with these clips. One of them is weighted and the other one isn't weighted, the unweighted one you just clip on the top, like so, and again this has got teeth that bite through the film, and then you put the weighted one, goes on the bottom, like so, so I hang that up in the bathroom after I squeegee it, and uh, I'll see what the results are like. And you join me as we look at the results from this little camera here. This is the little Minox uh, 35GL, absolutely tiny little camera, but it's got quite a good specification to it actually, it's got quite a good, uh, good performance. So this was my 12 exposure test film, uh, I'm going to remove the clips from the end of it, as you can see I don't look after my negatives particularly well. Here I have my... Uh, my light box and some skizzers. So, I want to cut down there. Black tape on that. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's quite close to it. So you just cut them into strips and this is archival storage sleeves. You've seen these before. And you just slide them into there. So it's in the test film, so I'm not going to be precious about it. It saves on storage sleeves this time as well. You've got a little 12 exposure film. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Uh, right, this was out of date HP5, well out of date HP5, about 15 years out of date, and I exposed it, I overexposed it, I actually exposed it at 200, and it's a zone focusing camera, so you're relying on hyperfocal or whatever they call it, where you're looking at the depth of field on your scale 
and I think I set this to 10 feet for most of them which covers me from right the way through to infinity at f16 or f11 so looking at the negatives they look pretty sharp um, somebody suggested in the comments quite usefully to turn the camera upside down and use that flap as a kind of lens hood and that worked quite well actually these were shot yesterday quite a sunny day but yep spacing looks consistent they look uh, sharp enough to print from as you know I don't scan I print in the dark room so uh, over this weekend I will make a contact print of these and pick out some to print a bit larger but the film I'm quite impressed with and also this was D76 that's done five or six films already seven and a half minutes at 20 degrees well room temperature I'm never that accurate with temperatures when it comes to colour processing and printing then yes you have to be more accurate with temperatures but here in the UK room temperature seems to work just fine for developing black and white films and black and white papers but yeah I'm pretty happy with the results of that the camera doesn't seem to have any light leaks uh, the exposures are okay they're not brilliant but then it is a very old out of date film and with a little bit of tweaking and that we can probably get the negatives a little bit better but uh, overall I'm quite happy with that so I think this will become my new everyday carry everywhere camera because it's uh, it's quite a stunning performer really for its size I mean, it's quite impressive so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this development film um, the, the Agfa tanks are interesting they're a bit more expensive than your Patterson tanks in fact they're a lot more expensive than the Patterson tanks but they do have that advantage of the 200 mil chemical usage and the fact that you can load your film without needing a dark bag or changing bag or even going into a darkened room like your bathroom or whatever um, whether that convenience is worth paying the price for I'm not really quite so sure but uh, yeah it's a fun thing to play around with and uh, I only have the 35mm one I don't really think I'll invest in the 120 one 120 is the sort of format that you tend to shoot more than one roll of, so uh, um, I'll probably just stick with the 35mm tank. But yep, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, found it interesting, comments, questions, queries down below and um, hope to see you in the next one.